So a Punnett square is a tool that we can use to predict what the offspring are going to look like um, for a specific trait based on the genotype and the phenotype of the parents. So you figure out what the gametes are of the parents, remembering that gametes are haploid cells. So if each parent has two letters or two copies of a trait, each gamete will have one. So here, we're looking at flower color. Um, purple flowers are dominant over white flowers. And we have a homozygous dominant purple flower, which can give a big A or a big A, that is crossing with a homozygous recessive white flower with two little A's. So we put the gametes on the side and on the top of the pennant square. Typically, if you can determine who is male and who is female, you put the female on the top and the male on the side. And then we're going to bring the gametes across and down, and they're going to fertilize in the boxes. So you can see that all of the offspring on this cross are heterozygous, with a big A and a little a. And a heterozygous flower is going to be purple as well. So we can then express the frequency of the offspring as a probability or as a percentage. So we can say that four out of four offspring are purple, or 100% of the offspring are purple. You could also talk about them genotypically and say that they are all heterozygous. This is an example of a monohybrid cross because we were following one single trait. So you have to do some Punnett squares for your homework. Therefore, let's go through some examples. In poultry, a rose cone is controlled by a dominant allele, big R, and the recessive allele, little r, controls for a single cone. So the first thing I'm going to do is write down what I know. And I know that big R makes a rose cone and little r makes a single cone. Okay? Give the genotype and the phenotype of the offspring produced from crossing a heterozygous rose cone chicken with a homozygous recessive single cone chicken. So now I need to write what the parents are. Genotypically, what alleles do the parents have? The one of them is heterozygous, so that means two different, big R and a little r, and the other one is homozygous recessive, so that's going to be two little r's. Now that I have the parents' genotypes, my next step is to figure out what alleles they can make and what um, gametes they can create to pass on to the offspring. So the heterozygous could give the offspring a big R or a little r. The homozygous recessive one could give a little r or a little r. It doesn't have as many possibilities. So then we're going to take the gametes and we're going to put them on the pen of square. Since we have four gametes, two from each parent, we make a two by two or four squares in our Punnett square. So here's my Punnett square and I'm going to bring the gametes down and across. If I have a dominant allele, I'm going to write that one first. And then we can answer the question based on the results, what is the phenotypic and the genotypic percentages of these offspring? So genotypically, we would say that 50% of them are heterozygous and 50% of them are homozygous recessive. Phenotypically, we would say 50% of them are rose cone because they have the big R, and then we would say 50% of them are single cone. And that would be the correct answer for this question. Let's go on and we'll do the next one. It says, in humans, brown eyes are dominant over blue eyes. So let's write down what we know. So far we're looking at eye color in humans, and I know that Brown eyes are dominant over blue. So I see big B gives me brown eyes and little b gives me blue eyes. A brown eyed man marries a blue eyed woman and they have three children, two of whom have brown eyes and one who has blue eyes. So let's write all this down on the board. I know I have a man and a woman. And I have three kids. And I also know what eyes colors they have. The man has brown eyes. The woman has blue eyes. 
Two of the children have brown eyes, and one has blue eyes. Now, those are the phenotypes. We can also figure out some information regarding their genotypes. We know that blue is recessive, so if somebody has blue eyes, they have to be homozygous recessive and have two little bees. The mom, therefore, is homozygous recessive, and also this child that has blue eyes is homozygous recessive as well. Um, we also know that anybody who has brown eyes has to have a big B, right? So the dad has to have a big B, and the first two children also have to have a big B. Remember, however, that to have brown eyes, you can either be homozygous dominant or heterozygous. Both of these individuals are going to have identical phenotypes. Therefore, we, um, we don't know for sure if those individuals are homozygous or heterozygous, but we can figure it out based on the other information we have. So the mom is homozygous recessive. That means that the only possible gamete that she can give to her offspring is a little b. So she gave a little b to kid number three, but she also has to give a little b to kid number one and kid number two. That's the only option that she has. Therefore, we know that those children are heterozygous. Looking back at the dad, he gave a big b to his first two children. What did he have to give to the last child? This last child has blue eyes, meaning that they have two recessive alleles. One of them came from the mom. Where did this other one come from? It had to come from the dad. So the dad is also heterozygous. Let's see what questions um, the PowerPoint is going to ask, and we'll see if we can answer them based on the information we've come up with. What's the man's genotype? We've already figured that out, right? The man with brown eyes, we said he has to be heterozygous because he had a child with blue eyes. And then it asks, what are the genotypes of the three children? And we've already figured that out as well. Two of them are heterozygous and one is homozygous recessive. So this shows you an example of maybe a genetics problem that you might not have to do a Punnett square on. And we can just list it and work backwards to figure out all the information. Let's do one more. Okay. Um, in seals, the gene for the length of whiskers has two alleles. Dominant allele, big W, codes for long whiskers, and the recessive allele, little w, codes for short whiskers. So again, I'm going to write what I know. Big W is long whiskers, little w is short whiskers. What are they going to ask us? What percentage of offspring would be expected to have short whiskers from a cross of two long whiskered seals, one that is homozygous dominant and one that is heterozygous? So homozygous dominant is going to have two big W's, heterozygous a big W and a little w. So there are my parents. Now I'm going to figure out the gametes. This individual can give a big W or another big W. This one can give a big W or a little w. So I have four different gametes. I'm going to make a Punnett square with four boxes or a two by two. I'm going to move my gametes across and down and fertilize in my boxes. And these are my resulting offspring. So if we're looking for short whiskered seals. All of these offspring have at least one big w. Some of them have two. And a short whiskered seal, we're looking for two little w's. We do not have that option. So we're going to say that there's a 0% chance of these parents producing a short whiskered offspring.